If you're looking to self-host and manage your own P2P orchestration, well, you found the right video. This open source application is a great fit for smaller, lightweight P2P multiplayer games. And with just a few simple steps, we'll have Norway deployed in no time. And if you check out my last video, you'll have what you need to host and join games using Norway's P2P networking. Today, we're gonna to use DigitalOcean to spin up a Linux server, as I think it's one of the easiest and most affordable ways to get started with cloud hosting, something like $4 a month. I'll walk you through the process of uploading and starting the Norway application so we can connect to it from our game. If you're already familiar with DigitalOcean, use the chapter markers below to skip ahead to the installation section. Once you have your account created, head over to your project and select Create and select the Droplets option. Here we can choose whichever region that you would like. If you're looking for fast testing, I would recommend selecting a region that's close by. I prefer to actually select a location that's a little farther away from me just to get some baseline lag compensation testing. So I'm going to leave it at San Francisco. I'm also going to leave the default OS image selected, which in this case is Ubuntu. For the droplet size, I'm going to leave the shared CPU selected, as I don't think we're going to have any heavy compute loads. By default, our premium CPU option is selected, but I want something a little cheaper, so I'm going to select regular, and you'll see it gives us some less expensive options. And if you hit this arrow, there's another hidden option for $4 a month. Let's go ahead and select that. And later on, if you notice your instance is lagging a little, you can always upsize it. We don't need any additional storage for this instance, as we get 10 gigabytes out of the box which should be substantially more than we would need. For this authentication method, you can use the password option, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the SSH key as I feel like it's a little bit more secure. And if you're gonna be developing in the world of multiplayer, you're gonna to have to get used to using SSH keys. So select the SSH key option. And if you're familiar with how to generate SSH keys, you can go ahead and skip ahead and just paste in your SSH key content here. However, if you're not, you can follow these instructions. So let's take a look at how to do that. Oh, and if you don't have OpenSSH on a Windows computer, well then you can use PuTTY instead. And you can click the link here to see how to do that. So first we'll run SSH-keygen, and I'm just gonna save it to the default location with a custom file name. You can enter a passphrase and confirm it by entering it again. And now we've successfully created the key pair. Next, we'll take a look at the public key and paste its contents in the text box here on the screen. So we can run a cat command on the public key copy paste the whole contents and paste it into the browser. And let's just give it a name that you can remember it by. Great, now you have an SSH key linked to this droplet. This will enable us to copy files to this instance and also SSH to it when we need to start the Norway application. I'm gonna add this free improved metrics and monitoring and it looks like it'll be able to alert you when certain cost thresholds are met and you can use that to keep an eye on your spending so that you stay within your budget. This add initialization scripts option is actually really helpful if you wanna start an application when the server starts. And in our case, if you wanted the Norway instance to start when the server started, this would be a good place to do it. And as far as I can tell, you can only add this script upon server creation. I'm gonna skip it for now, but next time, if you wanna create a server that starts Norway automatically, this is where you would do it. So I'm gonna give it a name that I can remember it by. And you can see there it gives us an estimate about $4 a month, and then go ahead and hit create droplet. And you can see here we have our first droplet created and it's assigned an IP address. This is the IP address that we'll use in our Godot clients to connect to. And if you really wanna get fancy, you can also attach a custom host name to this and just give out that instead of an IP address, but that's for another time. And I like this interface because it has quick access to several things that you may wanna do, like add a domain, which I just touched on. You can access the instance through their console, you can resize it, add more block storage, and so on. So let's look at the details and you'll see a graph of our usage. And since we just started, we don't really have anything yet. The next thing we need to do is edit our firewall settings. This will enable us to SSH to the machine and also open the ports to enable the Norway clients to register and establish connections to this instance. Select the network menu and scroll down to firewalls and hit edit. And if we take a quick look at the documentation, all the steps to edit the inbound rules are listed here. Back in our firewall tab, select create firewall. Let's give it a name to remember it by. And you'll see here the first rule is for SSHing to the instance. But you'll see it can be done from anywhere in the world, which is something we really don't want to do. So let's lock it down to the IP address that you'll be working from. And if you've typed it incorrectly, you'll see this drop down for an add option. Go ahead and select that. 
And if we take a quick look over at the Norway documentation, you'll see the following ports that we need for the default setup. So where you see the new rule dropdown, select that and hit custom. Select TCP and enter the range of 8890 to 8891. And we'll leave that open to the world because we don't know where our clients are gonna connect from. This will allow our clients to register and request connections and also expose metrics over HTTP. Let's create another custom UDP rule and enter in 8809. This will be our remote port registrar. Let's create another custom UDP rule with a range of 49152 to 51200. This will be the port range that Nore uses to establish connections between the clients. Now scroll down and apply this firewall to the new droplet we just created and hit create firewall. Let's go back to the project and select the droplet. If we go back to the networking tab, you can see we successfully created the firewalls required for this Norway instance to work. Now let's establish a connection to the server so that we can install the prerequisites needed to run the Norway application. So in a terminal, let's SSH using SSH-I and then provide the key that we just created. And then we're gonna log in using root at and then put in the IP address of the instance. Go ahead and hit yes. And now we should be connected to the server. And you can check with the docs to learn more about how the SSH process works. So the first thing we need to do is add NVM because I'm gonna use that to install Node. So you can copy paste this command into the terminal. You can see there we've got it installed. And to enable the NVM in our current session, let's source the NVM.sh file. And let's use NVM here to install the latest long-term support version of Node. And let's confirm our node and NPM installation by checking the version. And you can see we've got both installed successfully. And next we need to install PMPM because if you look at the Norway documentation, it's required to run the Norway application. So let's use NPM and install it. Great, everything looks good there. Let's check the version. Great, we have a successful install. Next, let's upload the Norway application to our server instance. Download a copy from the Norway GitHub. And back in our terminal, let's use SCP to upload it. And here you also provide the key that we created earlier and then the zip file that we just downloaded. And if we switch back to the terminal window and we do an LS, you'll see the Norway main.zip folder is in our home directory. So let's try to unzip it. Oh, but we don't have unzip installed. So let's run a apt install unzip. And now we should have unzip ready. So let's unzip it and there we go. Let's go ahead and change directory into the Norway main folder. Now we need to install the Norway application by running pmpm install. And this will install all the required packages for it to run successfully. Now to start Norway, run pmpm start. And if you can see this output, you're ready to start using Norway. For this demo, I'm gonna be using the Godot 3D multiplayer template so you can clone a copy of yourself if you wanna follow along. And once you've ran it, select Enable Norway P2P, and then hit Host Game and enter the IP address of this drop it. So we can copy paste it here, hit Go, and you should see some logs print out as you connect to the Norway instance and drop into the world. And then in our client window, select Enable Norway P2P, hit Join Game, enter in the same IP address, and back over in our host window, hit Escape, and you'll see a little window pop up. Copy the second line there and paste that in as that's gonna be the ID that we use to join the host game. Hit go, and you'll see we get some logs over in the terminal window, and it looks like we had to connect via relay and our player has spawned into the world, excellent. If the NAT traversal fails for whatever reason, as a fallback option, Norway will attempt to act as a relay to establish this connection. And you can see our players are being synchronized between the client and host respectively, and I think we have a successful test here. And if we disconnect our clients from the game, it'll also print out these host disconnected logs for each client. And if you wanna enable debug logging, which could be helpful, make a copy of this env example and name it .env. So let's use vim to edit this new env file. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, type i to edit and remove info and type in debug. And then to save, hit escape, hit colon, and then type wq and that will write and quit the file. Now, if you wanna shut down the application, just hit Control C and then use exit to kill the SSH session. And to shut down the server instance, use this toggle switch here. 
I recommend doing this when you're not using it so that you don't rack up any extraneous charges. And this warning here is pretty important as it lets you know that you're actually still charged for the droplet until you destroy it. So just keep that in mind that you will be charged the full amount unless you actually destroy that instance. But for now, I'm just going to turn it off because I'll be using it again in the future. And that's it. Now you've learned how to install and run your own Norray instance. I want to give a big thanks to ElementBound. He is the maintainer of this application and has greatly contributed to the multiplayer community. I'll put some links below if you're interested in supporting his efforts. And I'm also adding an affiliate link, so if you want to use DigitalOcean, consider using that to support this channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below or stop by our Discord server. Hope this video was helpful. See you in the next one.